Why should guys make the first move? And why should women sit around waiting for them? Women should feel confident enough to just go up to a guy and tell him that she likes him. Hi everyone, welcome to The Humane Factor. I'm Namrita, a human rights lawyer and activist. Now most of us have been or are on dating apps. Today, that's how many of us explore different types of relationships and find people to date. I met my partner on a dating app and looking back, I realized that it's that one single swipe that changed our lives. If either of us had swiped the other way, our lives would have been so different. Now, back in the day when there were no dating apps, meeting people was much more difficult. We had to step out of our comfort zones, stick out our necks at events, rely on friends to set us up, or meet people online or on social media platforms. But that's changed today. With the influx of dating apps, we no longer have to wait to meet people. Can you imagine what it would have been like to get through the pandemic without dating apps? People simply wouldn't have been able to find partners or date virtually for the entire duration of the lockdown. Now, the dating app space flourished more than ever throughout the pandemic. Millions of singles worldwide have had to reimagine dating amidst lockdown restrictions and social distancing. The Me Too and Time's Up movements have prompted dating apps to focus on creating a safe and positive space, particularly for people who identify as women. So how have dating apps evolved to adapt to our changing mindsets? Elizabeth Timmermans, a Belgian-based researcher and the author of Love in the Age of Tinder, explains that online dating dates back to the 90s and the rise of the internet. It was reserved for geeky people who had a computer and you had to be at home behind these huge screens that you couldn't carry with you anywhere, Timmermans says. The chances were high you were chatting with someone living on the other side of the country or even in another continent. The first location-based apps changed that. Grindr was launched in 2009 and it helped gay men link up by searching for users within a specific geographic radius. Then, with the launch of Tinder in 2012, people with smartphones could start looking for love or casual dating in their area and it quickly became the most popular platform on the market. Today, there is no shortage of dating apps available. There's Bumble, which is touted as a feminist app. There are apps like Hinge, which removed the swiping feature entirely and instead users spark a conversation with a person of interest by liking their photo or commenting on a prompt in their profile. The dating apps Plenty of Fish, Match.com and OkCupid are also among some of the most popular dating apps and are thought to be more romance friendly than Tinder. Then there is Senior People Meet for those finding love later in life, Farmers Only for countryside romance, Raya for celebrities, The Notorious Ashley Madison for extramarital affairs, and Marry Me Already for those who have grown tired of the dating scene and just want to get married. There are also dating apps that cater to diverse genders and sexual orientations. For instance, Her is one of the biggest apps for LGBTQ plus women and queer folks. Now, the idea of online dating has evolved so much in recent years to keep up with the times. I'm going to be talking about two dating apps that are not just adapting to our changing mindsets, but are also catalyzing this change. This video is not sponsored by either of these apps, though of course I'd love to work with them. 
Now, Bumble is one such app that encourages women to make the first move. Bumble gets its name from female worker bees. Now, just as female worker bees do all the heavy lifting and care for larvae, Bumble women take on the initial dating labor by extending invitations to potential matches. Bumble men, much like male bees, largely sit and wait for their invites to come. Now, I think this is an incredible way to encourage women to be more confident and go for what they want without adhering to stereotypical gender roles. Now, growing up as a millennial, I belonged to an era where girls always had to wait to be asked out or wait for guys to make the first move. Girls who asked guys out were considered too forward or worse, too desperate. And you know what? Even guys particularly didn't like being asked out by girls back then. They seemed to like doing the chasing. Now, these gender roles were further reinforced by movies and TV shows where they'd always show guys wooing girls and asking them out and girls just sitting around waiting for the phone to ring. And as a girl who was a go-getter and who had no reservations about just going for what I wanted, I used to hate that. It was so frustrating and stupid and I never understood the purpose of these gender roles in the dating world. And thankfully, things are slowly changing now. I found a partner who loves me for being what was considered too forward back in the day. Yes, I asked my partner out and I asked him to marry me and he said yes. I didn't think I had to wait to be asked anything just because I'm a woman. Now, dating apps like Bumble are pushing women to make the first move and challenging the sexist and antiquated rules of dating. Because why should guys make the first move? And why should women sit around waiting for them? Women should feel confident enough to just go up to a guy and tell him that she likes him. Now, Bumble was founded by 31-year-old Whitney Wolf Hurd, who is one of the youngest self-made female billionaires. Before Bumble, she was among the founding team at Tinder, but after tensions with other executives, one of whom she'd been dating, she left. Shortly after, she filed a sexual harassment case. Tinder's parent company, Match Group Inc., denied these claims, but paid $1 million to settle the dispute. Now, of course, Bumble has had its fair share of criticism in terms of whether it actually makes a difference. Take a look at this clip. Whitney Wolf is no stranger to the world of digital dating. As technology takes such a leading role in our lives, it also sets young women up for huge risk of being bullied and facing all sorts of very scary uh, treatment. She co-founded the popular dating app Tinder, but left in 2014, filing a sexual harassment lawsuit that was later settled out of court. She set out to found a new kind of dating app, Bumble. Think Tinder with a feminist twist. The woman has to make the first move on Bumble. Wolf says letting only women start the conversations is the answer. Men are given this expectation to always be the hunter. We want to inspire change with how women feel about themselves when they date. It's a response to a digital dating scene critics say is superficial, impersonal, and often male-driven. How much of a difference does Bumble's approach make? The company pointed us to these popular users to make their case. The girls are serious on there because they have to reach out to you first. For some of the men, kicking back while women make the first move was their idea of a perfect world. I can see women actually becoming more confident and able to go up to a guy in a bar or a restaurant and say, hey, I, I think you're a good looking man. Uh, can we have a chat and have a drink? Some of these new apps like Bumble actually only allow women to initiate conversations. What kind of an impact do you see that having? Zero. Obviously, the goal is to put the power on the female side of things. I don't think it works at all. In old-fashioned love and the digital kind, Slater says there are no silver bullets. 
all a dating site can do is put you in the same room with someone who may have some of the same interests. You have to get out there. You have to meet lots of people. Whitney Wolf agrees that digital dating's problems and solutions start in the real world. By taking a real life issue and solving that, you then inherently end up solving online issues as well. Bumble has not been immune to the recent bad press hitting a lot of other dating apps. A recent critical Vanity Fair article actually singled Bumble out, questioning whether this approach really changes the fundamentals of digital dating culture at all. Whether or not Bumble has the answer, a lot of people agree they're onto the right question. Savannah, the founder of one major dating site, told me this is something every dating company is after, how to empower women. It's so interesting because I think through the series, I just keep having the same thought, which is, yes, maybe there are these problems with digital dating, but are these not just problems that happen in the regular world Do as well? Do these just reveal what dating culture is rather than what digital dating yeah. culture is? Now, the biggest criticism about dating apps like Bumble is that it does little to solve the realities of gender equality and rather pushes forward an illusion where women seem to be in control temporarily. And yes, there is some truth in that. The Me Too and Time's Up movements highlight how much unfinished business we have ahead of us before gender equity is a reality. But changing mindsets requires collective effort from various players within the society. We can't shift the burden on only one of the players, in this case, dating apps. So, do apps like Bumble put an end to gender inequality? Of course not. Gender equality is so much more nuanced and complicated than that, and expecting a dating app to solve such a complex issue is ridiculous. It's like expecting a beauty pageant contestant to provide a solution for world peace. I mean, even education hasn't been able to change mindsets in that respect. We've seen Nobel Prize winners like R.K. Pachori, who's been accused of sexual harassment. If education isn't able to change mindsets, how on earth will dating apps do that? We've got to have realistic expectations. Now moving on, in keeping up with the times where we're slowly starting to accept diversity in all colors, shapes, and forms, there are also dating apps for plus-sized people. Woo Plus is a dating app exclusively for plus-size daters. It caters to curvy people who are looking for those who appreciate curvy bodies. And I think it's a step in the right direction. For decades, plus-size people have been shamed and policed by others and are often told to be seen as less attractive compared to slimmer people. They're told that in order to find love, or to have someone find them attractive, they'd need to slim down or lose weight. Either that or they're fetishized and objectified. And traditional dating apps haven't exactly been pleasant for plus-size daters who've reported being fat-shamed. According to a survey by WooPlus, 43% of users admitted that insecurity and low self-esteem about their bodies used to be big hurdles in their relationships. In fact, I'm surprised that this number isn't much higher. If people are insecure about their bodies, society is 100% to blame with its stereotypical conceptions of beauty. According to this survey, 55% of the users believe that there is less stigma in embracing diverse bodies today than there was 10 years ago. Now, dating apps like WooPlus are slowly trying to change the narrative of people preferring specific body types. Now, we are moving towards an era where we can no longer keep pigeonholing people and trying to fit them into boxes. And we need inclusive spaces for people to feel comfortable in their own skins and just love themselves and others the way they are. Are dating apps going to change our mindsets completely? Absolutely not. We need collective participation from multiple players for that to happen.
But what these apps are doing is creating an inclusive space for everyone so that people who are perceived to be different from such archaic stereotypes aren't left out. They are taking baby steps towards achieving bigger goals and we have to give them credit for that. Wait, I'm not done yet. Before you go, please hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for interesting videos every Wednesday and Saturday. I'll be back soon.